Back over in the corner? Yeah, it's Tom Kuchowski, the Healthy Referral Newspaper. Can you, first of all, congratulate you on your amazing tennis uh, vision. And what would be your vision for the next 50 years for tennis? Who are you talking to? One, which one? Just your channel or, or yourself. <laughs> It'll never be the way I want, so I'm not even going to talk about it. <laughs> I'd have a team season, an individual season. Fighting is fucking up. You don't have enough time. Oh, we got a match at some <laughs> John and I could have a discussion for a long time and all this stuff here. We were having discussions in the lounge on no end versus no end. And the men's double should be, Mark Knowles should be seen in a moment uh, when he's with Elton's team. Uh, the guys should be playing two out of three sets. No, I, I do a follow-up question. Uh, what would your opinion be about more players uh, emphasizing more of the social issues like Arthur Ashe used to do back in the day with apartheid? Do you think more players should be involved with voicing their opinions and just more in the media? Well, some players do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think, uh, I think a lot of players do. It depends on the player. Mm -hmm. I mean, Arthur and I always spoke out. We are born the same year. About different issues, especially human rights and social justice. Um, some players have an interest in it, and some don't. Some players just want to perform, and they feel that's enough. I think it takes a certain kind of person that wants to put themselves on the line like that. But I think most of the pe people here speak their mind about whatever you want to talk about. At least that's what I heard in the lounge. And I think John McEnroe speaks his mind. Anyone <laughs> 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 um, he announces, or if he's got a, something that's he cares about or is bothering him, he, he speaks up. And Coco, I've heard her speak up, and Jen Michael, they were all speaking up in the lounge just before we got in here, so. That's, that's a hard thing to control. Though, Martina doesn't you speak up, though. Yeah, right. <laughs> you, you can't just say it should be that way and have the players be that way. I mean, you have to, to get to a certain level of maturity, I think, playing matches, being comfortable doing that before you can be there and, and talk about any issue, really. You know, when you first get on the tour, it's just about trying to win matches and, and do the best you can, and then, and then the, the rest of that stuff comes afterwards. But it's nice when the ATP does work with us on those kinds of issues. Yeah, I think, the, I think the associations do try. I know the WTA does. Yeah, the WTA is a great organization. I mean, we, we go and visit hospitals, we go and uh, visit local schools, and try and, you know, bring ourselves out there into the community. And as a, you know, young player on the tour, this, this year was my first full year on the tour, and being 19 years old, to be a part of that is just kind of great. And hopefully I can... <laughs> Continue to do that throughout my career. Coco, this is our this is our nineteenth smash hit. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. When you were born, we started this event for the Elton John AIDS Foundation, and uh, of course, Martina is actually interviewing Elton right now for AARP. Is the reason she's not here. I think she speaks her mind too, as uh, John McEnroe was alluded to. Um, so I think we do. Now, as you start to be around us, you'll see that we have been. Kenyon Johnson, TV20, just wanted to know, uh, how are you guys feeling about our lovely city of Cleveland? I just wish it weren't raining, but I love it. <laughs> <laughs> you can ask Elton, you know, Elton, I think, played his first concert here oh, in wow. 1971. So you might want to, when he gets in here, you can give a bad time about it. Oh. <laughs> There's Martina. I was interviewing Elton, actually, for something else. We're terrifying. So much easier him. to be here. Isn't it? I told you we were interviewing for ARP. So, I was, um, well, he knows around that. But anyway, <laughs> uh, right so front. much nicer to be here. Please ask well, away. I don't have to think. I just respond. I have a question for John. I'm with CBS here. John, Serena Williams had a couple of very memorable outbursts this year. As an outburst aficionado, is she taking it up to your level? Um, you know, Come that's, 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 that's <laughs> I think a very, you know, it's, that's the first time I've heard this today. Hi, John. First of all, so it's it's. But uh, Martina, how are you? Um, but I did think when um, Serena made her comments a couple years ago, did I ever say that? I have to admit, I thought I thought that through, and I think she taught me on that one. Although this one, this past year, was pale in, was pale in comparison. She, she, she acts a whole lot better, actually, overall than I did. So I, she doesn't want to be swept into the vacuum of my behavior. So. It's out of proportion that they open this year. It's usually a gender thing. A gender thing. If you know, the women like that, we get, we're not forgiven, we're not forgotten. I'm just going to, I'd like you to go and reflect a little. Because everybody who's bringing her up, she's had two outbursts in her whole career. Right. 
That is nothing compared to some of I guarantee you I'll have two outbursts tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I meant that in a, a No, way. I understand, but I'm just saying what happens, we have found that the, I don't know why, it's just very pervasive. It, it is funny because it's like, hey, it's coming along, right? People want more personality in tennis, and then when it happens, they're they're like, oh, there's a person and we can't deal with it. That's it's fancy. I mean, I th I thought she she didn't even use any any curse words. It was fine. She was she was irritated. It was in the, in the moment, and maybe a little long in the tooth with it, but it, it's it's not a big deal. You should go into, you should go travel to the Cleveland Browns game. I don't know if they're playing at home Sunday, but you should try to stand in the middle of the field and see what they're saying to each other. <laughs> <laughs> as, the play, as, as the play, the play is about to begin, if you could get a mic onto the field. Great. See, oh, they have they have more power than tennis. They don't allow mics on the field, so we can't hear what they're saying. Or a baseball field, when you can see clearly that the managers in the dugout are saying words like uh, obscenities. But everyone thinks that's great. But God forbid a tennis player say it. And God forbid a woman says it. And a woman's even worse. And Mark. she's black, that's even worse. It's, it's, you know, it's, so you're like totally, you know, go, yeah. totally overblown. Uh, the, the, the truth is, is that it's, 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 it's been going on, but hopefully, it is changing slowly but surely. That's the good news. No, but that's news for us. Come on. Look at that. Right here. Another question. Trash talk Martina, uh, you started your uh, world, t world tennis uh, uh, world career tennis. here. Uh, what do you remember about Cleveland and how has it changed to you? I was here for three months. I remember it very well. Uh, the Cleveland Nets, Marty Reeson and uh, Bob Gilton and Wendy Overton were my teammates. And I uh, learned how to cook while I lived here. And uh, yes, oh, Wendy you. Overton wow. taught me how to make an omelet. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, and her broke and mine didn't, so I was very proud. And uh, yeah, so I played here for three months and I know the town pretty well. Well, I did then. It's changed quite a bit, but it's nice to be back to uh, the beginnings because I've been playing team, world team tennis uh, 20 seasons, like over 20 seasons. Uh, so it's nice to be back where it all started for me. With, uh, yeah, Borg played here too. Yeah. Uh, right here in the front row? Good evening, John Cassie from <laughs> yeah. Channel 5 here in Cleveland. I saw the Philadelphia Freedom in the 70s. What's different this time around? We have fewer teams, we're smaller, we have a le uh, our calendar is really tight. We, have, we don't have as many weeks as we'd like. I mean, do you see the difference, obviously, in the, in the fan base? I mean, also, we, all, we don't have as many American players as we used to, the top players, which I think also makes it more difficult. Americans want to see Americans. And I can, along those lines, John, can somebody reach the status of these fine athletes here? coming from your background that you did when you were growing up today? Well, I have a lot better chance than, uh, you know, I came from a reasonably good back background. My father was a lawyer. We lived in Queens. We lived in a nice part of Queens, New York. It wasn't a bad part, so we would call us upper middle class or lower upper class. Um, so, uh, and that's not an oxymoron. <laughs> I, I think it's right, but, but the point is it's still a rich man's game. That's the problem. Uh, so this is something that we've been talking about. I mean, I know ever since I've been playing when I was 18, so it's been 30-something years already, and probably even before that. And that issue is still a major uh, hurdle that we have to get over. But um, Well, you've got your academy now. You're trying to help with that, right? Well, I'm trying to help with that, but in other countries, they afford more opportunities. The government may be more Yeah, the government involved. really helps in other countries. And so uh, it's, it's, it's gotten better, but not... There hasn't been a great amount of change in, the, in that regard. And tennis, the problem with tennis to me is that not enough things change. That's why Billie Jean, you know, I admire what she tries to do. Because it's like banging your head against a brick wall, dealing with these, the, the head of these federations and officials, the powers that be. They don't want to change anything. So this is part of why she gets squeezed, I think. You know, because I God crazy. forbid one they of the They want to keep their job. They don't want to change it. Right. <laughs> I, I still think, here's what I think. When a child signs up for tennis, he or she should be put on a team immediately. You put the kids in a circle and they name their team. So that starts the socialization process and they bond. And then anything you do, you call it, so you get rid of the word lesson. You never hear that word again in our sport. And it's just like in soccer or football or basketball, which I grew up in first. Uh, a lot of us up here did. And the kids always do skill drills together, practice, go hit or whatever, just like you talk in other sports. And that's it. So if you're giving a lesson, you're doing it in a team atmosphere, but you don't say that. You use different words, because semantics are very powerful. Kids do not like that word, lesson. 
Here's the typical thing. A child plays soccer two to three times a week for two hours, and they'll say, and my child, or the child will say, and I take a tennis lesson for one hour on the weekend. Now, if you're playing one sport six hours and you're playing tennis one hour, which sport do you think you're going to be better in, number one, and which sport do you think you're going to like better? So I think, unless it's a team, it doesn't absolutely have to be team tennis format, but everything should be team when they start. You want to play with your friends, just like in basketball, football, baseball. I mean, my younger brother was a major league baseball player. I lived it. And I got into tennis, and it was so obvious what our sport needed. When I got into the sport, I said, everybody wears white shoes, white socks, white clothes, and every person's white skinned. Where's everybody else? I mean, I used to say that at 12 years old. So it is like, it drives me crazy. And John's correct. I'm crazy. Because I think, <laughs> I, think I lived, I know it. If more kids are playing soccer than tennis, why aren't we, do, why aren't we using the sign them up and put them on a team? It, this, is not, this is not rocket science. This is human. And the great thing about team tennis, it's co-ed, it's on a level playing field, and there's equal contribution of both genders. Yolanda, can you announce the match is starting at 80 numbers? <laughs> 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 I promised last question. No, you asked. Does that make sense or not? It's very simple. Eight, 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 eight in the morning. Yeah, 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 sorry. Last question right here in the second row. Can you help with TV20? Um, Yes, Jeff. Are players chosen, or do they volunteer for these teams? Or uh, they, they are very kind of. We, they, we, the dog was on his way, and then they said, <laughs> we want a real you know, guy that really can hit top spin. So they certain, called me. Uh, call certain guys. players we know are very good to us. We have a lot of team tennis players that play, like for instance, Chelko and Ken Michael are on the Boston Lobsters together. Martina played 20 seasons. John plays for the sport times. In New York, he's been, these people have been great to us. We do ask them, Lauren Davis is local. It's just obvious things, but, uh, and then Elton gets to choose, and then I get whoever's left over. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we try to give Elton a chance to get to know other uh, players. Thank you guys very much. I'm going to remove Anyway, you get to see Elton. And bring the next one. have a bad time now. He's back since 7-1. Yeah. Full circle. Thank you guys. Circle and roll.